God loved us first. This is the clear message of St. John in our second reading. God loved us first. Before we were born into the world, before we could open our eyes, before we even knew our own names or had names, God was already loving us. All of creation, the beginning of every day, and what sustains every moment finds its origin in the fact that God loves us. God already loves us. We don't have to do anything to earn that love or to keep God on our side. All we have to do is respond to the love that God has already shown to us in His Son. And yet, what so often happens is that our lives become an attempt to show God why He should love us, to make God proud, to prove ourselves to Him. And what immediately happens is that uh, when we take on that mentality, we shift the starting point of love from God to us. So it no longer starts with God. It's no longer God's initiative. Instead, it starts with us. It starts with our initiative, with our strength, with our capacity to keep loving in every moment. It's like when your boss retires and you take over that position and all the responsibility that comes with that office suddenly falls on you. I learned this when I moved from being an associate pastor to becoming a pastor. But it's even worse than this because it's like we're the ones who are forcing God into retirement. We're saying, you know, thanks God for getting the business up and running and for all the gifts that you've given to me. You can kind of step back now and take it easy and I'll handle it from here. We kind of push God off to the side because we want to kind of take over the business on our own. But if we look back, at the Acts of the Apostles and see how the early church began. It is so very clear that the mission of Christianity is not initiated by the Apostles, but it is prompted by the Spirit that is moving within them. This is why Peter says to Cornelius, who's kneeling in front of him, he says, get up. I myself am a human being, don't, don't worship me. And he says this not just as some act of humility, but to say, don't put that weight on me. Don't expect me to be the one that saves you. Don't look to me to, to be the one to sustain you in your life of faith. Peter knows that he is only responding to the work of God that is within him. And yet, how often, how often do we think that it all depends on us and we feel the weight that comes with it? And why? You know, why, uh, why do we allow this to happen? Why do we live life like this? Why do we run ourselves ragged trying to prove something to God? I think because sometimes in the depths of our hearts, we doubt what St. John says so clearly. God loved us first. God loved us first. I'm not sure we're always aware and that we believe this fundamental fact of Christianity. To say that God loved us first doesn't mean that God has some emotional attachment to us. He's not a needy adolescent that has to be constantly affirmed by our efforts. God is always giving himself to us. God is always pouring himself out for us. If we're paying attention, if we're distracted, if we're resisting, if we're hating, if we're loving, it doesn't matter. 
God is always giving himself to us. It is his only way of facing creation. Because God is love. He has no other position in front of reality, in front of all of his creatures. He is only love. He only loves, he only desires to embrace and lift us up and give us new hope. God is only love. So I don't know where this thought comes into our minds that says, uh, God, please love me. I don't know what is it in our hearts that makes us think that we have to prove ourselves to him. God has already proven his love for us through his son. But for some reason, we doubt it. For some reason, the world around us, around us makes us think that God doesn't love us and that we have to merit or deserve that love. God is love. It is the way he is in front of us. It is the way that he faces all of creation. And so what does he ask of us? Not to take his place, not to become the source of love, but to respond to the gift that he is giving to us in every moment. You know, it's, it's regrettable that so often we speak of Christianity in this way, that by living a good Christian life, that we are somehow making ourselves worthy of God's love. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. If we hear people talking about Christianity in this way, please tell them to stop it. This is not what our faith is about. Christianity is about what God has done for us, not about what we have done for God. And our response to that gift is the way that we participate in what God has already done for us. You see, the more that we can take our initiative out of this equation, the better it gets for us. The more we recognize that God is the one who's first, that God is the one who moved towards us first, that God created us out of love first, the better off we are so that our task is only to respond to what God is already doing. And we do this by living every moment of life with the awareness that everything is given. Everything. Everything is a gift. And if we were to live this awareness with the utmost authenticity and with real reason, we would immediately feel free. Freedom is the result of this awareness that God gives us everything, everything that we need. Because the vast majority of our anxiety, I would venture to say, is caused by the illusion that life is what we make of it. Uh, it's a popular phrase that we use in our culture today. And we spend so much time trying to get life just the way we want it, instead of responding to what God puts in front of us every day. Friends, God loved us first. God loved us first. We have nothing to prove. We have nothing to earn. He already loves us. He is not a domineering and manipulative father, and we don't have to earn his love. He already loves us. He will always love us. He only asks that we allow ourselves to be loved and that we respond with hearts full of gratitude in love to him 
and towards our brothers and sisters. He already loves us.